A serious bioweapon leakage incident occurred in an underground experimental facility, turning all the personnel into bloodthirsty zombies. A specialized armed team was sent to investigate the accident at the Hive base, but they were attacked by the zombies and only two survivors, Alice and Matt, managed to escape. However, they were captured by the Umbrella Corporation, who subjected them to modifications using the T-Virus. Umbrella Corporation dispatched another team to investigate the Hive situation, but this time, they inadvertently released not only zombies but also deadlier creatures called Lickers. The team was quickly overwhelmed and defeated, realizing that the situation was out of control. Umbrella Corporation discreetly took away some important individuals, including Dr. Ashford and his daughter Angie. But while en route, Angie's car crashes, soon the virus spread from the hive to the streets of Raccoon City. People in Raccoon City were initially unaware of the virus outbreak and thought it was just a normal violent event. The police even brought some zombies to the police station. However, a female police officer named Jill realized something was amiss. She took action and killed all the zombies in the station, warning everyone to leave Raccoon City immediately. During this chaos, Umbrella Corporation's executive, Kane, took the opportunity to activate the Alice plan. Then came the scene at the end of the first film. Alice emerged from a hospital in Raccoon City and found the streets in complete chaos, realizing that the Hive's virus had leaked. Soon it was nightfall, and the whole of Raccoon City had largely fallen. And to prevent a greater catastrophe, the Umbrella Corporation had placed Raccoon City under total quarantine. The survivors gathered at a bridge, the only escape route to the outside world. However, only those who passed the inspection could leave safely. Jill and her team also arrived at the bridge. Suddenly, an infected person appeared in the crowd, and Jill's colleague Peyton tried to help but was bitten on the leg by the mutated individual. Fortunately, another police officer intervened, and with Jill's assistance, they dealt with the zombie. Witnessing the scene, Kane feared the virus spreading outside in order to stop the inspection, sealing off the gate to prevent anyone from leaving. This decision caused unrest among the crowd, and people began to express their discontent with Umbrella Corporation's actions, trying desperately to force their way to the gate. Umbrella Corporation proved to be incredibly ruthless, resorting to using weapons to drive away the helpless people, leaving them with no choice but to return to the infested Raccoon City. Thus, the entire city has been turned into a zombie playground, with a handful of ground troops and police still fighting the zombies, unaware that they have been abandoned by the Umbrella Corporation, due to the overwhelming number of zombies outnumbering the available ammunition, the defense lines were quickly breached, only Carlos managed to lead two colleagues to break through the siege. Meanwhile, Alice, who has left the hospital, comes to a weapons shop, but just as she was changing into a set of clothes, she suddenly felt physically ill, and it turned out to be a strong reaction from the T-virus in her body, and Alice remembered the image of herself being transformed. On the other side, Dr. Ashford pleaded with Kane to save his daughter, Angie. However, Kane refused, leaving Ashford with no choice but to try to find a way himself. Dr. Ashford succeeded in accessing the city's surveillance system and located his daughter's position. He began searching for survivors in various corners of the city, and soon, he spotted Jill and her team among the survivors. Jill and her companions arrived at a church, where they encountered a surviving man. The journalist accompanying them planned to record Umbrella Corporation's crimes, but inside the room, they heard unusual sounds. Jill investigated alone and found a seemingly quiet woman sitting on a chair. The priest suddenly appeared, claiming that the woman was his wife. But to Jill's horror, she discovered that the woman had turned into a zombie. Perverted priest feeds his zombie wife on corpses. At that moment, the zombie suddenly broke free. Jill was about to shoot when the priest stepped in front of her to stop her, and the zombie bit into the priest's neck. Jill managed to kill the zombie with her gunshots, but the journalist panicked and tried to leave the church, only to find hordes of zombies gathering outside. The three managed to close the church door, but they soon realized that liquors, even deadlier creatures, were on the rooftop. Terrified, the man ran away, not knowing that liquors preferred to prey on isolated individuals. Shortly after, the man was killed on the spot by the lickers. What's even more frightening is that there's more than one such monster. They're so fast and agile, and their skin is so thick that pistols can't even hit them. Even if they hit the lickers, they're useless. Soon, their bullets were all used up. Facing lickers' next attack, the three of them could only stand still and wait for death. At the critical moment, a bright light shone from outside the window. In the next second, a motorbike breaks through the window and it's none other than a reinforced version of Alice. As the motorcycle landed, it knocked back a liquor. 
With the throttle at full throttle, Alice did a 360-degree backflip and the motorbike sped towards the liquors in front of her. Alice seized the opportunity and pulled the trigger, precisely hitting the fuel tank, causing a massive explosion. With ease, she dealt with one of the liquors. The other liquor was not willing to give up. Alice swiftly drew two submachine guns and sprayed bullets at the liquor while simultaneously destroying the iron chains on the wall. Although the liquor evaded the dense bullets, it couldn't escape from the cross that weighed several tons behind it. The liquor that had been knocked over earlier also returned for revenge. Alice kicked a nearby chair towards the liquor, then quickly drew her gun and shot it, sending it away. She then approached and dispatched the last liquor that was pinned under the cross. After leaving the church, the group passed through a cemetery. There, Alice noticed that Peyton had been infected by the virus, and she was about to shoot him when Jill intervened, causing a tense standoff. Jill said that when Peyton fully mutated, she would handle him. Alice lowered her weapon. Who knows that in the next second, the corpses in the graveyard will suddenly mutate. The journalist nearly got bitten but was saved just in time. But more zombies are crawling out of the graveyard. But ordinary zombies are nothing for Alice and Jill to fear. After putting up a fight, they managed to escape the graveyard. Meanwhile, outside the city at Umbrella Corporation's camp, the team detected that the T-virus infection had reached its peak. To test Alice's combat capabilities, under Kane's command, they initiated the Nemesis program, soon in the hospital where Alice wakes up. Matt, also transformed by the T-virus, wakes up from his hospital bed in the guise of Nemesis. A helicopter appeared and airdropped two boxes of heavy weapons specifically prepared for Nemesis. Carlos and his team witnessed the helicopter's arrival, thinking it was a supply drop from Umbrella Corporation. However, they found the boxes empty when they got close. At this moment, one of the team members suddenly underwent a mutation and attacked Carlos. It turned out he had been bitten during the battle, and they had no choice but to shoot and kill him. Meanwhile, Nemesis, now armed with weapons, began searching for Alice throughout the city. He first encountered a group of surviving police officers on a rooftop. The policeman standing guard on the roof was stunned at the sight of the behemoth in front of him, his shots doing no damage to the Nemesis. Unbeknownst to him, Nemesis had a lock on him. The police officers downstairs immediately went into combat mode. Nemesis is controlled by the chip, and all his actions are under Kane's control. Seeing that there were still so many surviving armed men, Kane then decided to test the power of Nemesis with this group of policemen first. Despite their powerful firepower, the police couldn't inflict any damage on Nemesis. After scanning the situation, Nemesis slowly raised a Gatling gun with 5,000 rounds of ammunition. In a single round of firing, all the police officers, except for LJ with his dual pistols, lost their lives. Terrified, LJ dropped his weapons. Nemesis confirmed LJ's combat ability as zero and turned to continue searching for Alice. Meanwhile, Alice and her group, having escaped from the graveyard, received a call from Dr. Ashford through a public phone. Dr. Ashford promised to help them escape Raccoon City if they helped him find his daughter, Angie. Alice had no choice but to accept the condition, as the city was now completely overrun with the virus. An Umbrella Corporation planned to obliterate it with a 5,000-ton nuclear bomb at daybreak, wiping out all evidence of the hive and the virus outbreak. The group immediately headed towards the school to find Angie. However, as they crossed a bridge, Alice sensed a strong killing intent. Peyton doesn't believe it and ends up getting shot in the hornet's nest the next second. Yes, it's Nemesis coming, realizing the danger. Alice urged everyone to run. Alice then jumps off the bridge and goes head to head with Nemesis. The battle data from this scene was also recorded by Kane. Alice approaches the Nemesis with both guns in hand, but the bullets don't help at all. And instead she is punched out of the air the moment she gets close to the Nemesis. As soon as Alice landed on the ground, Nemesis's Gatling gun began to wildly spray bullets. Alice rushed to hide in the side, but the Nemesis also pressed forward, and the powerful firepower made Alice retreat. Alice managed to jump over the fence, but found a rocket attacking. Alice jumped into the house against the dense bullets, who knew that Nemesis also broke through the wall in the next second. Looking at the rubbish opening in front of her, Alice rushed to shoot and then skillfully dodged the Gatling shots. Alice counterattacks and slides into the rubbish pipe at the same time, but to her surprise, 
Nemesis fires a rocket at the pipe. Alice escapes by hiding in the rubbish truck. Nemesis detects that the enemy has disappeared and leaves the scene. At this time, Jill and the others are driving to the school. And on the way, they also meet LJ, who has zero fighting ability, and take him along with them. Upon arriving at the school, they split up to search for Angie. LJ encountered a zombie while looking for Angie, but Carlos arrived just in time to save him. Carlos had also received a call from Dr. Ashford, just like the others. However, the journalist wasn't as lucky. She saw a girl sitting quietly and thought it was Angie, but it turned out to be a zombie. When she turned back, numerous zombies surrounded her, leading to a gruesome death. The dropped camera recorded the journalist's gruesome death process. Jill arrived later and found only a trail of blood, but here Jill managed to find Angie in hiding and took the dropped camera with her. However, when they left the classroom, they encountered zombies and even more terrifying zombie dogs. In the next second, the zombie dog jumped at them. Jill shoots but misses and is knocked out by the zombie dog. Seeing the zombie dog attacking again, Jill can only fight to the death. At the critical moment, Carlos's teammates arrived in time to finish off the zombie dog with a single shot, and also took care of a few zombies along the way. But before he could be handsome for three seconds, he was pounced upon by a zombie dog that appeared out of nowhere and was eventually bitten to death on the spot. Jill can only take Angie to escape, but when she came to the kitchen, two zombie dogs chased after her. At the moment of crisis, Jill had a bright idea to turn on all the gas stoves in the kitchen. Jill used a pan to knock away one of the zombie dogs. Jill escaped with Angie and threw a lit match behind her. However, the imagined explosion did not appear, and the matches suddenly went out before they hit the ground. Alice, the last to arrive, threw a lit cigarette into the kitchen. At the first sight of Angie, Alice sensed that she was infected with the T-Virus. She then pulled Angie's arm away and found numerous injection marks on her arm. Surprisingly, Angie had the T-Virus antidote in her backpack. It turned out that the T-Virus was developed by Dr. Ashford himself. Due to Angie's terminal illness since childhood, she had to rely on crutches to walk. To save his daughter, Dr. Ashford developed the T-Virus, which could repair cells and successfully cured her. However, Dr. Ashford's research results were seized by the Umbrella Corporation, who used it to create various bioweapons. Leading to the current crisis, Carlos and LJ also arrived at this location. Carlos discovered the dead bodies of his teammates, but Alice discovers that Carlos is also infected with the virus. But as luck would have it, there's an antidote here. As the group exited the school, they received a call from Dr. Ashford. Dr. Ashford confirms that his daughter is safe and tells them that there is a helicopter flying to City Hall but they will have to fight for it themselves. But as soon as they hung up the phone, Kane found out about Dr. Ashford's plan. Alice's group soon reached City Hall, and after assessing the enemy's numbers, Carlos and Jill began their action. They easily took down two guards, but a hidden sniper aimed at Carlos with a Barrett rifle. However, just as the sniper was about to pull the trigger, something covered his eyes. It turns out that Alice has already sneaked into the roof. After dealing with the sniper, Alice used a repelling technique to descend to the ground and quickly eliminated the remaining guards. In this way, the team successfully took the helicopter. But when they were about to leave, Kane suddenly appeared and took Angie hostage. The rest of the group had no choice but to surrender. Alongside Kane, there were Nemesis and Dr. Ashford. It turns out that this is all Kane's plan. The purpose is to capture all of them and use these hostages to force Alice to fight with Nemesis again. Because Kane wants to know who's stronger and weaker than the two transformed monsters. Alice, of course, wouldn't allow anyone to control her. However, in the blink of an eye, Kane raised his gun and shot Dr. Ashford, a critical figure, forced to comply. Alice engaged in a hand-to-hand -hand fight with Nemesis. Despite Nemesis' thick skin and formidable defense, Alice's agility and extensive combat skills made her nearly evenly matched. Nemesis is even losing ground to Alice's onslaught. An enraged Nemesis wrenches off a section of iron as a weapon and instantly launches a counterattack on Alice. With the added weapon, Alice was pushed back and finally knocked to the ground. To ensure a fair duel, Kane threw two weapons on the ground. Seeing this, Alice immediately picked one up to block a potentially fatal attack. With the weapon in hand, Alice gained the upper hand again. A few rounds in, she knocked the weapon out of Nemesis's hand, then rode the momentum and kicked out. Spikes piercing Nemesis's back behind her. 
But as the fight went on, Alice remembered the image of Matt being transformed, and stopped. And Matt seems to have regained some of his memories. But Kane orders Alice to take out Matt directly, and when Alice can't bear to do it, he orders Matt to take out Alice again, unbeknownst to him. Matt had completely recovered his memory and used his Gatling to kill two soldiers. He turned around and shot at the other soldiers. Alice seized the opportunity to pick up a weapon and fight back. At the same time, Carlos and Jill also seized the opportunity to break free and picked up weapons on the ground to join the fight. Kane saw that the situation was not good, so he gave the order for bombing. A nuclear bomb will be launched instantly, destroying Raccoon City in five minutes. Kane questioned why the helicopter had not taken off only to discover that LJ had taken control of the cockpit and knocked him down with a punch. At this point, two helicopters targeted Alice and started firing wildly. She managed to evade the dense bullets, but as she passed through a glass door, she was surrounded by three soldiers aiming their guns at her. Alice remained composed, appearing to surrender and disarm. However, she had already devised a plan to fight back. After eliminating the three soldiers, Alice realized that her teammates were also in danger, so she immediately ran over to support them. Alice keeps shooting at the helicopter with her pistol, but the bulletproof glass is impenetrable. Just as the helicopter locked onto Alice to open fire, Matt appeared, firing a rocket that destroyed the helicopter. After the explosion, Alice woke up to find Matt dead. They hurried into the helicopter, which took off but left Kane, who had committed numerous evil acts, behind. Zombies soon overwhelmed him. However, shortly after the helicopter took off, the nuclear bomb arrived. The shockwave from the nuclear bomb sends a piece of iron flying directly towards Angie. Alice rushes to defend her from the attack. The powerful shockwave caused the helicopter to crash in the wilderness. Hours later, Umbrella Corporation personnel arrived at the crash site and found Alice barely alive. However, they found no other survivors. Soon the video taken by reporters, which began to be reported in major news outlets, was apparently the video of Jill and Carlos' exposure, but the Umbrella Corporation quickly used the media to spread disinformation, blaming the nuclear explosion on a nuclear power plant. Umbrella Corporation escapes culpability, while Jill and Carlos are falsely accused of being wanted criminals, causing panic among the public. On the other side, Alice woke up in a massive container, once again subjected to Umbrella Corporation's enhancements. She temporarily lost her memory and her body's full capabilities, but as memories flashed through her mind, Alice quickly regained all her memories and became even more powerful than before. She disposed of Dr. Isaacs and a few guards effortlessly and was able to kill someone via surveillance. Guards died of bleeding from the seven orifices after just a single glance at them. As Alice stepped out of the lab, she was confronted by a large group of armed personnel blocking her path. At that moment, a car slowly approached, and Carlos and Jill appeared. They pretended to be high-ranking officials from the Umbrella Corporation and picked up Alice. They don't know it's all a plot by Dr. Isaacs. Let them go. Program Alice activated. 